The House of Mystery presents Inside Writing, the radio show where authors discuss their writing process in all genres. Welcome back into the House of Mystery, and we're filming or recording this uh, on uh, Friday the 13th, and, uh, you know, we've got a special guest today, and uh, and we've got our old Chipper over there. <laughs> I was going to call you Sparky, but, Sparky or but you're hungover, is what we're going to call you. <laughs> I mean, well, we weren't supposed to tell anybody that. You're living the life of Riley. He's been on a 20-day <laughs> drunk or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what's going on? I thought you were doing, you know, you're up there online doing this little karate kick and stuff, and I can't wait to get back to, uh, <laughs> to going in for, for training, and then, then, then he's drinking, you know, get rid of his gut. And <laughs> and he's ordering beer and pizza and and wings at night. At night. This is this is a a, a recarb day. Oh yeah. The last night. night was. Yeah yeah. It, well, last night. Every night that you're on. <laughs> this is like, what kind of training do you guys do in in in, in karate? That karate. is the training. Oh, <laughs> we eat chicken wings and beer Pains and pizza. And beer and whiskey and. Oh, that's that's how you yeah that's and and that's what that, oh I get it now I get it now <laughs> I didn't realize you what kind of training you were in this is the Steven Seagal training exactly <laughs> You're gonna, this is how you become Steven Seagal you eat lots mm. of pizza and wings and mm -hmm. drink beer yeah. and uh, that's it I got I'm it. trying to move around as little as possible well that's how I it's live my life. <laughs> No, no moving around. Uh, well, anyway, now today who have we got on the? We've got a scary man from uh, Eastern Canada uh, in in Ottawa area, and he's not in the government. So hmm, that's pretty impressive, uh, Mr. Ronald McGilvery. How are you doing? Very good. How are you guys? Well, I'm doing fine. I think I think Dave's a little bit hungover. Hungover. Um, they will be okay. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Just have another drink. I know how that is. Um, okay, so Mr. Mr. Ron, uh, now you've got a new book that just came out. Yep. Uh, Tales from the Parkland, yep. and stories for late at night. Um, what do you want people to know about this book? What What's it all about? Um, it's a a collection of short stories that um, I've sort of came up with during the whole uh, COVID experience. Uh, so they're a bit, uh, darker. It's, um, each one's, uh, you know, much different than, uh, than the next. Although I would have to say that, uh, an apocalyptic theme seems to be a bit more prevalent, but I guess it's just relevant to these, uh, times. Um, I, I personally believe they're, uh, they're entertaining. They're fast reads, even though some of them, uh, look, uh, like longer page, uh, turners. Uh, from the feedback I've gotten so far, they everyone said that they they breeze through them pretty uh, quickly. So, what kind of horror is this? Is this kind of like a suspenseful? Is it um, uh, you? Because you can't really get into the detail of the characters too much in a short story, can you? No, no. It's uh, a lot of them are well. It depends on the story. Because some short stories are like vignettes, and some stories are are like you know just sort of plot driven um it uh it, most of mine are, are plot driven uh they're sort of they they when i'm writing them they're something triggers an idea and i write it out so it's all sort of plot based um you know i try to have my characters um you know a bit more fleshed out um but yeah it's uh it's more of a uh more encapsulated time frame because it's uh you know such a, a short period of time that it uh, takes place. In most of my stories, it would be more um, sort of horror thriller, uh, sort of uh, suspense. There's, uh, I mean, there is, you know, murderous mayhem in it, but it's not, um wouldn't say it's like slasher. It's not uh, like Friday the 13th or uh, anything like that. Mine are more sort of like Twilight Zone-ish. So if someone hadn't read my stuff or isn't like, what kind of a story is it? 
there's not like uh just a serial killer going around slashing people. It's more uh um sort of Twilight Zone ish uh stories with a sort of a twist, uh, usually at the end. Not so much slash and gore as it is sort of uh, a suspense, a fearful sort of thing as you're going through. It's more of a mind, a mind yeah, thing. Yeah, there is, there is uh, uh, gore, I guess not explicit gore, but, uh, you know, people do uh, meet unfortunate ends and some characters do unfortunate things. But, uh, yeah, it's not, uh, not gratuitous. Oh, well, then. Too bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's my you know, next so, uh, collection. <laughs> that's your next. That's the <laughs> unedited version. Exactly. <laughs> the author's the cut. The author's cut. Um, now, The Garbage Collector. So a story, something like that. Um, now, so are you sitting, like, at home looking out your window upstairs, ringing the bell for your wife to come bring you dinner, and while you're waiting – you see the garbage collector, and that kind of spawns the idea. Or where, where does how does it work for you? Well, to clarify, I I, w- I wouldn't go downstairs to uh, to ring the doorbell. <laughs> I would call from the phone upstairs because it defeats the purpose to come all the way down. Right. Right. Because if I'm yeah, I'm, exactly. <laughs> so you've got this down. Yeah. You're, so you're a professional. Exactly. Um, so it's usually there's something triggers i've uh you know a thought in my head like for garbage collectors it was uh um, the thought of what would what would i do if i came up with a uh you know a situation where i had to make a decision um which children if i had two two kids which one would i give up to save the other or would i do such a thing like how would i respond um I think I, I, I was, I watched a cult movie. I think it was racing with a uh, race with the devil and it was sort of like a cult, uh, kind of horror movie. And, uh, I, I sort of was thinking about cults and then I thought, well, if I moved in this neighborhood, it seemed ideal. And it ended up to have this ideal lifestyle. You had to give up one of your kids said, you know, what would I do? And it was just that what if idea. And that's sort of what triggered that whole story. I think a lot of, when I look back at some of the stories, it seems like I had a, a lot of fears when uh, thinking about uh, with my uh, my son, you know, worrying about, you know, what would happen in this situation. I guess the fear of losing a child is, uh, you know, a big uh, motivating factor, you know. So that, Everyone that, can relate to that. Yeah, yeah, because I was thinking back afterwards, a lot of the stories seem to have this, this kid in peril, and that's, I guess, what usually triggered you know, I was thinking, what scares me? And that's what it was. And with garbage collectors, I thought, well, in that situation, what would what would happen? I'm wondering if your stories are um, interconnected, um, if you have your own mythos, or if they're if they're all standalone. No, they're they're pretty well all standalone. There's uh, um, the novel that I'm working on right now sort of has a a mythos, but uh, I'll. Uh, I'll see how that goes, but uh, but with these ones, you know, they're all standalone, and I'm actually I'm pretty proud to say they're most of them are completely different than one another, so it's uh, it's quite a varied uh, uh, bunch of stories, it's like a, a bowl of M and M's, each one or bits and bites, each handful, you know, a different uh, different uh, group, so different flavor, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, what scares me is men in Speedos. <laughs> <laughs> not me. No. Not. <laughs> well, there we go. Now we're talking. Now yeah. we're going to get yeah. to the real part of the story yeah. here. So now yeah. now that you're, 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 you know, you're a smart, good-looking man wearing Speedos, yeah. you're an author, publisher. Living the life. So, so you're living the life. Mm-hmm. So so yeah. the chicks are throwing themselves at at you now, and so are the guys. Yeah. So yeah. which one do you choose? <laughs> you see, that's well, the question. Generally, when they like come to the house with their signs, "We love you, Ron." Uh, I usually I'll see them from my window, and uh, I'll pick up the phone and I'll call downstairs and get my wife to come up and deal with it. <laughs> he's, he's always, he, he, you know, it sounds like your doorman, not your wife. <laughs> I 
hope she doesn't listen. You know, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. You know, she knows you that know, I uh, I love her. I'll call her later and tell her. <laughs> yeah, you'll call her later. <laughs> Send her an email. Yeah, when I'm asking what's for dinner. Yeah, yeah, and by P.S. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what do you hope people get out of something like this? Like this, you know, you want this for a fear sort of thing. Do you have kind of a a, a hopeful outcome, like of what you want people to uh, to take away? I, I just want, it's just for the enjoyment. I just hope they like the stories um, that, uh, you know, they uh, takes their mind off of uh, this uh, the crazy pandemic that's going, uh, uh, you know, around. Um, but other than that, yeah, I just, uh, just purely for the enjoyment and that uh, hopefully they'll, uh, um, you know, look for some of my uh, upcoming stories and, uh, and projects. I wonder when when you write characters, do you um, hear your characters? Do you hear the um, the the uh, prose in your head? Do you have an inner monologue? I know I hear voices, so that's why I ask this question. But uh, or, or is it more images and symbols and, and stuff like that that you're trying to transcribe to create the story? Uh, no, it's uh, they're they're talking in my head. It's it's for me. It's it's like um, it's like watching a movie in my head, like it all. All my stories mm. play out in a movie. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I, you can probably, if you're, if you read the stories, you can probably, they they have a cinematic feel to them. There's like, mm. uh, lots of, lots of dialogue. I don't have large pages, pages of, you know, um, just prose. It's, uh, it's kind of quick moving along. So when I'm writing, I'm picturing the whole thing. I can picture the scene. And it's almost like, you know, writing the movie in my head onto the page. But I have to also be really careful about that because because I do write scripts for films. It's like easy just to make your your story come across like all it is is like like a a script trying to slap dash together. So I uh, you know try to be careful with that. When you see this in your head, like playing, is it like a uh, Omnimax theater, three D? Is it, they're scratch and sniff in the aisles? Like what? <laughs> how, uh, how intense is it? Like what? Like do do you actually see the the the, the um, horror parts, or is it just kind of the basic story character you get? Um, no, it's uh, I'm pretty sure it's it's pretty vivid in my head. Like I, when I'm writing through, I can, I picture it, you know, sort of all happening. I find it helps me if, uh, you know, I'm describing the scene or, you know, how the person reacts. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, uh, you know, thinking it all out and, uh, um, it's sort of having done, uh, you know, more, I guess, script work than, uh, I have actual prose. It's, it's instilled more in me so i'm picturing you know how a shot would go and stuff like that so it's when you've been doing it for so long it's hard to uh sort of change it but yeah it's it's pretty vivid in my uh my head i see the actual kills the uh you know and hopefully it comes across yeah, not the, the only story. crazy one well, no. I mean, there's plenty of crazies, right? Come on. <laughs> Just turn on the news. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They're out there every day. It's uh, endless. It's endless. Um, so, and that, that, so you're saying that this kind of came to you, like this book is kind of something you put together during the pandemic. So do you think that the pandemic had a, a large influence on this? I would say so. I mean, some of the stories uh, in the collection are older, and I think the whole thing stemmed from was the whole outbreak because couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do anything. And uh, up here in Canada, at the beginning, it was just a complete disaster. So we didn't know what was happening. We didn't have any vaccines, so it was kind of scary. So you're never leaving the house. So I I went through and looked at a couple of uh, uh, old stories that I had, and I like this is a really good story. I think I'll I'll rewrite it, and uh, so I uh, I wrote a couple of them, 
uh, rewrote them, and then it just sort of built up steam. And I, because once you start writing again, the ideas start to flow, and then it was just uh, it was just one story after another. So uh, you know, as horrible as COVID is for uh, writing, it uh, it was uh, it helped me very productive as I sat in my room. So what do you think of the horror world right now? What do you think of horror in general in, in 2021? Uh, from streaming movies to books to, um, I would say, theaters, but they're not really kind of going too much now. But uh, So in general, the world of horror, where do you think it sits right now compared to the past? Um, uh, I, I think it's actually, I don't want to say it's like a, come into some new renaissance or whatever, but I, I do find that it's, it's starting to make a comeback after it had sort of dried up after a while. And um, I mean, movie wise, there's been some really clever uh, movies. There's of course, you know, the, uh, uh, God, can't think of the term, uh, redos, which I'm usually not that fond of, but the books, with uh, the indie market seems stronger than ever. I find myself reading a lot more uh, indie horror than I do uh, the bigger authors. Um, it's uh, I find that uh, there's just a, a lot more content and, and a much more uh, diversified and varied content as well. And uh, it's, uh, it's probably as good or better than any time that I remember. So I'd say it's a yeah, good time if you want to get into a, horror. And that's a long time. I mean, you're pretty old. I'm really old. I'm really <laughs> so, old. As yeah, you mentioned, you know, like... Bef- join the club. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think is classic horror? But do you, you, you say comeback. But, you know, for me, I noticed a lot in horror that um, it's kind of a thing I'm not really fussy on, mm-hmm. is that there seems to be a lot of romance in it. Uh, it they, they really sort of focus on a lot of relationships in the people involved in the horror. And I, I'm sort of thinking that it's too much. That's my opinion. Um, I, I don't think they need to go to town with uh, character development that much, as much as they're doing. But, you know, I'm not a pro, of course, with horror, for sure. Yeah. Um, so what do you think of that? Do you, what's your thought on that? Uh, well, I haven't actually read a lot with a, a lot of romance in mind. But I guess, you know, I pick stories that, uh, you know, appeal more, you know, to me. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, well, I don't want to. I was going to ask you, so, well, what were these with lots of romance in it? But, well, no, just, I, you know, because I, I haven't read as much um, yeah. as I see on streaming services. Like, there's a lot of horrors and there's, the, you know, sci-fi horror series. Too. Yeah. And, and you put them on and, and, you know, it just on anywhere, Prime, Netflix. I'm not picking on anyone in particular. It doesn't matter. And you just go, oh, that looks good. That looks cool. And you turn it on, and uh, the third episode, it's just still all about, you know, different people's drama within each other. And it's not as much on the horror itself or wow. the sci-fi or whatever's going on. That's just what I've noticed. Yeah. Um, but. You know, that's usually with like apocalyptic is that the kind of shows you're watching like uh, yeah, yeah the well, world? that seems to be what yeah a lot of that is sort of focused on it's either after the world's ended or some major catastrophe or it's about to end or they're trying to stop it from ending like that seems to be a big um thing these last few years and i don't know yeah. that, even before the pandemic a little bit yeah well walking dead brought that yeah. i mean i think there's like four spin-off shows so of course they want to make it, you know, different than than that because it was a landmark series. So they go, well, we'll do it different. We'll 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 build more of the character studies so you know, like the the characters, and they want to do it faster. Where the original Walking Dead, things happen sort of at a slower pace, kind of thing, where uh, you know you met the characters and you got to like the characters as you went along because you were spending so much time with them where now they want you to sort of get right into the, the character. So I guess that's why they're adding all the sort of the, the relationship and it goes on for episodes. So showing you each sort of character's sort of plot behind it. Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's probably why they're not as successful as the original. Well, and, 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 and quite often, um, 
you know, you, you've written script, right? So you've gone yeah. in, you, into script writing. I think it's difficult to take a comic and sometimes even a book, um, especially when it gets to horror or end of the world sort of theme, and script it for something you see on television, whether it's a movie or a series, because sometimes it doesn't transfer that good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it, it's, I mean, basically when, if you're going to adapt something like that, you, you have to pare it down. And that's a job in itself because you're basically deciding who you're getting rid of and what scenes you're getting rid of because you can't do like a whole book into a movie. It's just, it would be like endless. So there's always going to be lost in translation, so to speak. Yeah. That's interesting. So is there some sort of formula to that or is it just sort of, sort of by feel? It's, it's by feel really. Cause each person, whoever the screen writer is that would be looking at a, you know, the book would be going through it and it would be their interpretation of the book and go, you know, if I envision we don't really need this character. So it, it'd be a total, like a personal preference. So if I was adapting, you know, a novel, I would go through it, and the first thing you'd have to do is cut and go, well, can't do this, can't do that. Usually it's depending on the budget, too. It's like, well, can't have them escaping in a spaceship to the moon on our budget, so that whole chapter is gone. So a lot of it is uh, financial decisions as well. But then, you know, you look at, you pick, you'd know, you know, well, I have a, this is how many characters we're going to have in the, the like in, in a book, I can write 50 characters, but in a movie, you can only have, you know, a handful. And often that is too much for uh, the audience. So, you know, you got to go what characters can go. And a lot of times you'll blend characters. So you could have an attribute of one and another. So, you know, to make it uh, it all work. So it's, it's mostly uh, a cutting and pasting kind of thing. Then once you have sort of an outline of the story, then you can do the creative writing part of it. But yeah, the paring down a book is uh, is the the first step in that kind of uh, situation. Do you have a preference? Do you uh, enjoy uh, writing short fiction more than screenwriting, or more than more or screenwriting more than uh, writing short fiction? Do you, do you have a preference on on uh, what you write? Um, it really it, it depends on my mood. I would say for me. It's, uh, for just a strictly writing, uh, screenwriting is, uh, comes the most natural to me. Um, hmm. I just, uh, you know, can envision stuff just easily in my head and I can, uh, I can pump out scripts relatively quickly. Um, short stories are, are like close behind. I like, uh, I like writing them, uh, uh as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a toss up between those novels, which I'm attempting as well right now, uh, I can do, but it's, uh, it's tougher. I, I would, I would say easiest for me is script writing. The only problem with that is you're a lot more reliant on a lot of other people. Hmm. Because you can write, like I can write a short story or write a, you know, a novel and, you know, have it published and, you know, it's, it's done where with a script, it's, there's lots of fingers in the pie. You know, there's producers, there's a director, there's actors, like any of them pull out or change their mind or whatever. And everything you wrote is basically, you, you can't really do much with a script if no one's willing to, uh, you know, put it together. So although I'd say it's easier to write, I probably would say probably, you know, prefer, you know, short stories because it's, it's totally on you. You can write it and then, you know, it's either published or it's not, but it's done. Not a lot of people mm. just will sit down and, Hey, you want to read my script? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, it's, yeah, there's just, not a lot you can do. Yeah. What's your favorite story that you, you did in this uh, Tales from the Parkland? I'd probably say uh, Big Boy. It's probably my favorite story. It's uh, Sounds It good. was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, 
it, uh, it sort of had, it was a, a, I wouldn't, it's not a personal story, but it's, uh, it was a story that, uh, um, was sort of based around my, my son. It was a, a thought that I had in my head about, you know, what would happen, uh, if, you know, sort of this, an apocalypse or something traumatic in society happened and, you know, the husband and wife were at work and, uh, your child was at, you know, a daycare and you had to somehow during this whole end of world scenario or this catastrophe, trying to make it from where you are to the, the daycare or the school, uh, you know, what trials and tribulations. And it's funny because the story was originally from the parents' viewpoint, like what they had to go through to try to make it to their kid. And then it ended up completely turning around on its own and became from the, uh, the child's standpoint of being sort of, you know, helpless and having to wait for others to help them. And, uh, it, uh, yeah, it was, it's funny how when you're writing something, a character can sort of take over. And, uh, mm. so yeah, it, uh, it, it, that story always resonated with me. I'm wondering too, like you're saying characters taking over and I've had that happen. I had a character once, um, go from, uh, an old abandoned novel and then just kind of showed up in, in a newer work and said, hi, I'm here and I'm in this book and there's nothing you can do about it. So I was just wondering if you ever had a character do anything in a story or, or, uh, or even in a screenplay or whatever that surprised you. Well, yeah, I mean, with, with big boy, that completely surprised me. He just like, I don't want to be the, uh, the, the, the kid that's out of, uh, you know, the picture sort of, waiting for uh, my parents to arrive. I'm just going to like kick out the jam and I'm going to be the character. And he just came storming right to the front. Um, trying to think if there was any major uh, changes that uh, most of them are, are pretty stuck close to, uh, to how I envisioned it in my head. I mean, most of the, the characters are pretty strong right from the get go. Which is how I generally get mm. the get the stories. I'm trying to think of if there's any sort of circumstance. Um, I guess in the in the novella um, Harmony, um, the uh, there's a, a character that sort of came on, which was he was supposed to be just sort of a secondary kind of foil to the main one, and he actually. Uh, it came up. So yeah, I guess, I guess they can. You just, you'd never know. It's like each character, you know, just sort of speaks as you go along. Kind of make it sound like it's some kind of weird magical thing. When, <laughs> well, when I'm you, saying it, you, like, you probably drink a lot like Dave, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, so are you, are you inside the heads of your character or they're inside your head sort of? Is this sort of, do you, do you put yourself in the place of that? Like, for instance, like Big Boy, are you putting yourself in, uh, you're talking about Peter, who's the, the, the kid in the daycare and the world's ending. Um, are you inside that character's head or the parent's head, for instance, when they're, when they're coming for the kid? Yeah, I, I always find myself picturing it. I, uh, it's, um, it, it, no matter which character it is, it's like, it's almost always, you know, I'm, I'm in their head at one point. I was going to say, they're all me. It's like, I put myself in, I'm, cause I, I picture it right away. So yeah, I'm, I'm always invested in each, in each character. Cause when I'm writing, I'm picturing what that character would do. And I'm basically, what would I do, you know, in that situation or what would be the options? And then of course you have to, can't always go with the normal option. I mean, you, you make a decision because you want the story to be good. So you'll go, well, these are my options. Which one would make the story more interesting? But I, yeah, I always, always put myself into uh, the character's uh, head. That's just mm. my the way I write. And, and so and therefore, like when you write your stories, you write in the first person to say, like, would I get it from that person's mind? So if you're writing about, um, like, for instance, we talk about Big Boy. So are you writing it from Peter's point of view or from the parents' point of view or from everyone's? Does it change back and forth? 
Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I write sometimes in, in first person and then other times in, uh, in third. Um, each, each character has their own strong voice. Well, I, I like to at least, uh, you know, think so. Uh, for, uh, Big Boy, um, it's, it's a lot in his, like, his point of view. What do you think is more horrifying, but? Do you think it's it's a more terror if if you're in a person's mind um, that is experiencing something, or from some some point of view telling that you about the terror? Like um, you know, I'm 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 an amateur here, so I'm yeah. just I'm trying to pick this up because you know I'm going to steal all these ideas and then write. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, from a reader, a reader will get scared if they can put themselves in a character's position. It won't really matter if it's like written first or third, if, uh, you know, to, to be, you know, scared or horrified, you, you have to relate to whatever that situation is. And, you know, you sort of put yourself into, or at least when I'm reading, you know, try to put myself into that character's position kind of thing. And that's how you get sort of, creeped out so now you've added um a bonus of the novella uh harmony so you put that in with the book so if they pick up right now tales from the parkland they're going to get this bonus um addition yeah uh, the novella uh, harmony so so what is harmony uh it's uh it was a story that was supposed to be um uh, a short story and uh, it was one of those we're talking about earlier that uh one of the characters that was supposed to be minor sort of took on uh, a mind of his own and uh, the story just kind of expanded. And uh, I, I knew it wasn't going to be good enough to, uh, to be like a full novel, but I knew it wouldn't, it wouldn't work as a, a short story. So I thought I would uh, try as a, uh, as a novella. So it's um, uh, about a, uh, um, uh, an army fellow that uh, works on a uh, base and uh, he's been uh, discharged, but he still does training because he was uh, a sniper at one point and he trained the uh, snipers for and shooting in general to cadets and what have you. Um, but he's called into service because there's a, uh, uh, a mysterious situation that's uh, occurred at another fort that's known as a research and development base. And uh, when he gets called in, the secondary character that I talked about is brought in as well. And the two of them are basically not enemies, but they're, they, they'd had a falling out, but they're sort of the two best. So they're called in and given an assignment that uh, is something that they've never experienced before. And so they're dropped into a very, uh, uh, unpleasant situation and told to uh, deal with it the uh, the best they can and then things just progressively get worse for them now i notice now on the cover it, it's quite an interesting cover it's nice it's done well um who do you get to do your covers uh my book cover was designed by uh tanya sprawl she did a really good job she's doing the cover as well for my uh children's fantasy novella that'll be coming out uh, james Jr. dreamland and uh yeah, she came up with uh, a really good sort of style, and I really liked it. So the next novella is kind of sort of that same kind of style. So hopefully if I can keep pumping up the books, people will look at a book and go, well, that's a you know, a Ronald McGilvery book. You can tell by sort of the, the cover. Well, I'm wondering, too, when when, when you, you write these stories, um, you know, you're writing a story about the military, and, and are you pulling from – your own life? Are you uh, doing research? Are you taking from uh, activity, hobbies? Um, how, how does that work for you? Uh, for me, it's just uh, most of it's Google. You know, <laughs> do it <laughs> with the <laughs> research <laughs> because um, it's uh, it, it's, it's, it. it's been a long <laughs> been a long time since I was a sniper. You know, back when I was at Nam. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, these days it's so much easier to, uh, to research. And, uh, it, it was, you know, most of the time I try to write stuff that I don't have to do a lot of research in. It's like, 
you know, the story moves along. But in this case, you know, I had to sort of look up, a, you know, a few things. Um, but uh, I'm I'm not, like I say, a Tom Clancy who's, you know, can go into, you know, the breakdown of, uh, you know, all the, the weaponry and uh, all the, the tech stuff. I try to keep it a hmm. more sort of a, a breezier kind of uh, read. Oh, yeah. How did being a sniper in Nom change you? <laughs> uh, well, it made me a lot lazier. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's upstairs. You That's know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. What's the high ground? With my yeah. phone, exactly. Yeah, he's actually locked in. He's locked in that room. Yeah. Not... <laughs> yeah. So now you're, you're, you're putting your uh, work, your tr- talent to work now. You said you've got some... Um, uh, short film coming up or, or something like Chimes, is that what it's called? Yeah, I, I wrote uh, two scripts. Um, one is Chimes. Uh, it's uh, it's in pre-production now. It's supposed to be shot the last weekend of August. Uh, it was supposed to have been shot earlier, but with COVID and the restrictions that we've had here, we haven't been allowed to do anything. So it's pushed way back. And I have a second script that I wrote called The Crepuscule. It's... Um, uh, was supposed to have been the one that was supposed to be shot at the end of August. Now it's pushed back into uh, into fall. Um, so uh, it's uh, it, it'll be exciting to see those uh, done. Uh, be kind of it would just be fun to actually be able to work with kind of some people because for the last what six seven months I've been writing and it's all by you know you're lonesome in your room so. To actually, uh, yeah. you know, get these shot will be uh, will be nice. How is it do, doing? Um, are you going to be putting it on streaming service? Is that kind of your goal? And uh, what's that like now? What's the process like when you when you shoot um, a, a story, a movie, or a show? Well, right now, like for for shorts like that, it's usually you know more sent to the um, like a festival circuit where they'll get uh, you know. Uh, played there um, for streaming services. I mean, there's there's different ones, but it's uh, I probably wouldn't do a streaming service unless we were to we could put a few together and maybe make a, an anthology. You know, make it sort of a longer project where we could like put several shorts together as like you know ninety minutes. But um, mm-hmm. but yeah, for the when we do shorts like this, it's mostly just for. Uh, you know, the festival circuit, and uh, it's uh, it's it's kind of a more of a like a passion thing. So I have my uh, my creative partner uh, Jeff Radborn, who uh, we work together in most of the projects. We've been doing stuff together for God, we've known it for thirty years. Hmm. After so. you got from back from Nam. Yeah. Yeah, well, he was my spotter in Nam. That's how we got to uh, meet each other. Yeah. So and, he's, and he wears speedos too. Does he look good in speedos? Or? Uh, he's no. He wears the uh, the thong, <laughs> the thong in the pouch. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Yeah, he finds That's a speedo amazing. too restrictive. Oh well, you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm you a know, bit more conservative. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're much more conservative, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. You were Speedles with underwear. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you want to go with this? Because this is kind of, uh, you, this is the first book you've actually put out, isn't it? Like full book? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had stories yeah. in different publications, but never like a something like this with, you know, my name on it and all the stories are mine. Um, I mean, uh, you know. It sounds it's kind of sad, but I mean, I it, it, as the first book to really come out in my name, and it's it's sort of much later in life. Um, right. I'd like to say, oh, I wish I could. Like, I'm going to crank out you know, twenty, thirty more books. Probably not going to happen. Um, but you know, I hope people you know enjoy it, and uh, uh, it's. I mean, it's only been out two weeks. I noticed that uh, I think I've got four reviews so far, but they've all been five star. So that's, uh, that's good. So I got one oh, from, yeah. I mean, 
from like Amazon, the Amazon UK, uh, and two or three from the uh, .ca and then one from amazon.com. So I've got five stars from three different countries and two continents. You know, it's, it's more, I guess at this point in my life, um, it's, I'm, I'm writing for the, the pleasure and I'm, you know, hoping to get, uh, you know, good feedback, um, you know, just sort of to, uh, you know, I guess to, to know that, uh, what you're doing is kind of, uh, you know, worthwhile. I've been writing since my twenties. And, uh, so obviously I'm just going to continue writing because it's not anything I've ever, uh, you know, given up. So it'll just uh, continue yeah. on, but I'm not yeah, like, and you can always go back to escort services if, <laughs> you know, yeah, but it, 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 it's uh, it's not as lucrative anymore. I'm not the man that I was in the picture. No. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's like it's like come on, that's how it works nowadays. That's the picture that's up on the site. You know, they they don't know until they're there already. Let's get them to pay up front. Pay up front. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's all it's all good. Um, well, fantastic. Anybody, anybody you'd like to work with coming up? Um, you know, I, I, I uh, <laughs> there's, you know, there's, it'd be more people I'd like to, you know, like to meet or, you know, just talk with. I, uh, I, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, I don't, uh, play well with others, but I, I seem very single minded with my stories. Um, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's funny cause I hear that and go, I'd love to work with so-and-so and so-and-so I've never had that urge. I'd love to sit down and, uh, you know, uh, talk with them and, you know, pick their brain and just, you know, have a conversation. But, you know, when people talk about how lonely writing is, it's, it's, you know, that's when I'm in my element. Like I, when I sit down, I'm writing it's like it all comes streaming out, you know, sometimes, you know, hours can go by and I look at the clock and I'm like, wow, where'd the time go? And, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, like, for example, like my creative partner with, uh, with Jeff Radborn, uh, we've been doing stuff, you know, for 30 years and there's days both of us probably feel like killing the other person. And, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> but we, we've got sort of, uh, a pattern and we, we, um, complement each other's strengths. Uh, so it's, uh, it's worked out well, but, um, yeah, I mean, you could ask him and he'd probably be like, you know, if I just walked off the street again, I'd never work with Ron again, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, it's, but, you yeah. know, we did a few projects early on, uh, when, uh, you know, we are starting out and found that we worked really well together. And, uh, you know, I guess we just, we know that we work well together. And uh, so we, uh, we uh, look the other way on uh, each other's uh, foibles. Well, yeah. And sometimes knowing that, that or having that little bit of, I don't know, tension or, or whatever that is, um, helps with the creative part of it, right? Yeah. So I think I, you know that's 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 kind of normal. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you should see the fights Dave and I have. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> they're legendary. Yeah. 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 Like, well, lots of swear words, <laughs> breaks everything. You know, just like every coffee part, every glass in the house, he's just smashed it all up. You know, I don't know. It's crazy, but um, but out of it comes something good. So that's all that matters, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean to, uh, I mean just I, I remember when the the box came for my uh, the author proof, you know, and I was holding it. Just, uh, I mean it's 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 the closest thing that uh, I guess I'll ever come to uh, for childbirth. You know, it's like uh, it was kind of like a baby. I like, go in the box and out it popped. I couldn't just I couldn't stop holding it. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know it's an exciting time. It's uh, yeah. yeah, you know. You know, you're wearing your speedos, and out it popped. Yeah, yeah. and no labor yeah. pains. Yeah, <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> and when they dropped it off, 
I could see them from the window. So all I had to do was call down and have my wife bring it up. Wow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jeez, you know, well, at least that was very polite of you to call down and say, hey, by the <laughs> way, you know. Yeah. Said, my book's here. This, yeah, don't don't be wasting any time here. We need this. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty interesting, you know, and um, um, it, it's good to see someone actually uh, – living out kind of what they want to do. It sounds like it's something you've always wanted to do and, and it's all working out for you. So, yeah. you know, it's good yeah. to see. Yeah, I've been, um, I've been enjoying it. I, uh, I, I wasn't sure if I could pull off going from, you know, sort of script writing, which was generally my strength to, you know, trying to write it down into uh, prose, but uh, I think I pulled it off. What would you say to someone uh, in, in a position of, of doing something and they've always wanted to be writing uh, horror or science fiction or whatever it is that they, they sort of think about or dream about. Um, and it doesn't matter what age they're at, but, you know, um, what would you say to someone that's kind of how you were before this book came out? I just just do it. it just, just do it. The one thing that, uh, you know, the COVID thing has, has taught me is you just never know when some kind of, BS is going to show up next. You know, it's just like, well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until this kind of point. And it's like, well, you know, you waited, and then COVID came. So, and now you're all dead. So it's like, if you have a dream, just go for it because you just never know when you're going to get that opportunity again. Yeah. I mean, it's true. I mean, it, it can end tomorrow. So you just don't know, yeah. right? Um, you know, because you can go, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I, I, you know, maybe I should take another course or, Maybe I should do that. And it's like, you know what? Just do it because who knows or what is going to be around the next corner. So it's like, you know, if you want to do it, do it. I mean, it may not work out, but at least you'll know it's the, uh, it's the, you know, never doing it and always wondering and then finding yourself, you know, on your, uh, your, you know, deathbed going, you know, I should have tried it. I should have tried. I was too scared. So it's like, Nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah. No. So, and did you have a website set up yet, or do you, yeah, yeah, you do, don't you? What yeah. What would your website be? It's uh, www.ronaldmcgillivray. dot com. And and is that how you like uh, people to to look you up or find you, or do you have like a, uh, or do you like social media, or do you like uh, yeah, I'm on dating uh, apps. Like what? What? Yeah, I'm on. Uh, on hotspeedos.com. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm writing this down. Yeah. <laughs> also have the yeah. don't call me late for dinner.com. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that way, you know, they, they know right up front what you're like. But I'm on Facebook. Yeah. I'm on uh, Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Um, just Type in my name. They're uh, they're all open, so you can see what I'm up to. Um, my web page at uh, ronaldmcgillivray.com. Um, uh, you can see it has links to things too. It has uh, the trailer for uh, the uh, my film Chimes that we're going to be shooting soon. There's a trailer up for that. There's uh, my book trailers on the web page as well. Um, I have an author page on uh, on Amazon that they can uh, you know, look up as well when they're buying my book. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't look don't up my author that. page unless you're buying my book. Yeah, just remember that. <laughs> yeah. So we'll right. have that all linked, of course, to our website and everything else so people mm-hmm. listening can find you. And, um, you know, we'll have the uh, the grinder and speeder, speedo and all those up there too, right? So people can just one click and, the handle will be big boy. Big boy, yes, <laughs> that's right. Big boy. Yeah, yeah. Tales from the Parkland yeah. uh, hardcover coming soon. Yeah, well, yeah. there you go. I, I like it hard. Yeah. Um, well, this has been uh, amazing. So I mean, it's, it sounds like uh, the, the whole COVID sort of thing has an effect on you, but doesn't. Yeah. Because you do sort of get into being by yourself. And going through the emotions is how I read it. 
Yeah. And that's when you're writing. But whether there was COVID going on or not, you would be doing that. Yeah. Well, I always wrote, but not, not as prolifically. It's, uh, cause life gets in the way, you know, it's always an excuse. It's like, well, when I was writing, well, you know, I, I got to work later. So, you know, I, 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 I should take a nap or, you know, I, I got to mow the lawn or, oh, we're having people over. So I'm not going to write. There's like a million different reasons why you don't want to sit down and write stuff out. Yeah. And this just kind of, there was like a year and a half of sitting inside. And, you know, especially at the beginning up here in Canada, there was so much confusion because of our lack of vaccines and stuff. It was just, you were afraid to leave the house because you didn't know when we were going to be vaccinated or if we were going to be. So it was just like, oh, just barrack. I mean, we had like coolers full of food. We went to, you know, in case everything shut down because no one knew what was happening. So writing was, uh, was I guess, uh, an outlet. And uh, it, um, I don't know, it worked. It uh, and, and now that I've started writing more sort of prolifically getting stuff out, it's it's flowing easier now. I'm not doing spot, you know, story here, story there. So, yeah, well, it's good that it's flowing because you have something to do with all that toilet paper you got. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were the one that bought all the toilet paper too, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We were we were all just storing it all into the in the back and selling it to the neighbors. We just would yeah, go in of there course. <laughs> for for a decent markup. Yeah. Well, nothing's uh, nothing's free in this world, especially yeah. at the end of the world. And then, yeah, and then, he's, <laughs> and then he's stuffing his speedos with the rest. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, but I always did that anyways because it makes me look hot. Yeah, that's. A- <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Now you see, we're finding out a lot of stuff that mm. you, you know you've done it all. Yeah. You you've been there, and uh, look at you. Um, well, the book Tales from the Parkland. And the author is the guest, Ronald McGillery. Thanks for being here. Hey, it was a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ron. Right, thank you. To find out more about our show, guests, or to listen to past shows from our archive, please go to www.houseofmysteryradio.com. <laughs> The end! By George, he's got it! It is the end! How dare you? If you're lying to me, I'll be back. This has been a production of Something Weird Media.